Hello again everyone, this is Gilmer and I'm doing something a little different today. I very rarely play or do a let's play. Actually, I don't ever do a let's play of anything other than Ajad or Matrix games. But today I'm doing something a little different. This is Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I really like this game. And the reason I'm doing this uh, this video is to show some people who have asked about how they can make money in Kingdom Come Deliverance. And there is an easy way to do it. And I'm just going to show some people how to do it. I'm doing a little short video. I'm at the Rete Miller. I'm on my horse. The horse is Pebbles. If you, as you can see, I'm on the Ginger and a Pickle quest, so I'm still very early in the game. So facing, facing Rate and away from the Miller, I'm going to go to a place where you can make pretty good money. Um, it takes a little bit of work, but you don't have to do any fighting if you don't want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go to Sasau. So let's go to Sasau. And this is a normal playthrough, so you can use fast travel, but I'm going to show everybody how to do it. So, first thing I do is I'm going to cross the river. And the next thing I'm going to do is as soon as I pass this building, I'm going to take a left. I'm going to go up this little track or path for a ways. I feel like this is the quickest way to get to Sasau. Somebody might find a other way, a different way, a better way possibly, but I like this way. So at this point, I get off the track and go straight across. As you can see, my horse's stamina is getting low, so I'm going to drop down to a canter, let his stamina rebuild. And then once I get to this track, I'm going to take a right, and then at this fork, I'm going to go left. This track will take you into the town of Ledechko. And at some point during the game, you will have to come here. So, it's nice to get to familiarize yourself with it a little bit if you need to. I have played this, this uh, game a little bit, so I am leveled up a little bit. But if you want to see my level, I'm at level 5. Actually got a couple of things that I can... update myself with so I did see uh, Bernard already um, which one was better if you, you'll damage his weapon 50% more firm grip blocking your I like that one because I, I use a shield I like blocking a lot blood letter you have a greater chance of causing your opponent opponent to bleed and then I don't ever do combos. I always do um I always do master strikes. So I've up have um I'll upgrade mule and mule is you carry fifteen pounds more. Agility yeah. featherweight bomb will call you cause you less damage. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna get a chance to do a lot of these. Thick-blooded, you bleed slower. So if you get damaged, if you get cut in combat, you won't bleed out as fast. So I'm in Ledechko now. And I'm going to come up here to basically the crossroads of Ledechko and take a left. So now I'm going west out of Ledechko. There are two encounters on this road that you have to wor worry about. And 
you can outrun them if you want. That's not a perfect way to do things, but it is a way to do things at times. And also, you can save. Saving costs you a save your snaps if you have one. If you don't, you can't save there. So anyway, there is a counter, a, a chance of an encounter at this turn right here. And as you can see, I am getting attacked. So I'm just going to outrun them. Because they're, they're in wait for you. And unless you like fighting, there's no sense in fighting them. I mean, I fight them to skill up in damage. And I fight them for loot at times. But there's no reason to fight them. No gameplay reason. And so now, if you notice, right after the river, I took the little the little track that goes kind of straight up the middle. I don't know if you notice that. We can turn back around and look at it again. I was a little bit worried that I was going to have those guys coming after me. So see, after you cross the river here, you have three directions you can go. Well... I thought there was a third one that way, but maybe not. Maybe it's just two. But either way, you want to go up this little hill, kind of straight ahead. And this is going to take you into Sasau. There's another chance encounter on this road. And it's right around here. And actually, that's it right there. They have the, the road blocked. And I just... I just went around it and they didn't even they didn't even notice me going around it having trouble a little trouble handling my horse my horse is pebbles I haven't upgraded my horse you want to keep following this track and if you want to we can take a look at the map as you can see this is the this is the route I took. I, I was at the mill. Wait a minute. I was at the mill. I came across here, went up this way, and instead of keep following that track, I went across this this um, you know open land until I got to here, and then I got back on the track and turned right and took the left fork and went into Ledechko, and then went west out of Ledechko. This is where the uh, encounter occurred, where they attacked me. And went across the river and took this. And this is where the other encounter happens. And as you could, I don't know if you could see it, I didn't want to stop. But the road was blocked. If the road's blocked, there's that's an ambush. They're coming after you. So... Keep that in mind if you see that. But this is this is supposed to be for people. What am I doing? Okay. This is supposed to be for people just starting out. They don't have a lot of money. If you want to take a look at my armor, I have the basically the bassinet that was given to me as a bailiff, assistant bailiff or whatever. Um, I did get a mail quaff from um, when I fought. The humans who were holding on to Hound's Cape on. That was an early quest. As you can see, I don't really have a lot of real nice armor yet. And that's and I haven't even had I haven't really had the money to even repair what I have. So and if you want to look at Groshen, I have three hundred and eighteen in Groshen. And that's because Hans Capon gave me a hundred uh, Groshen for winning the, uh, the the hunting competition, and then I got a couple of Groshen here and there from other things, uh, looting people in the uh, in the intro, intro and things like that. Um, haven't spent any of it, and I have sold a little bit of armor. The three hundred and eighteen Groshen is not a lot. So anyway. And here I am talking. 
and I completely, completely skipped some, some things that I wanted to skip. You just get to the point where you play this game so much that you just, you're just going. So this is the Wagoner Inn. You can, you can buy a permanent room basically here for about 220 groschen. And once you do that, you'll have a chest here to put any kind of loot in it. And it's available at any of your uh, chests. So if you put some stuff in your chest in, in this inn, once you have your permanent room, you can find that loot at the uh, Rete Mill as well. Because you have a chest there that you own. So anyway, after I get to the Wagoner Inn, I want to go to the Sassau, uh, the Sassau Monastery. And there's actually a fast travel here once you get it. And it's right around in here. As you can see, that's a fast travel on normal. If you play hardcore, you don't get to use fast travel. I'm actually doing a hardcore playthrough at this point because it's fun. It's hard as hell. It's not as hard as that. It's not that hard, actually. But you don't get any, you see the compass at the top, you don't get a compass. You don't get any notification of where you on the, are on the map. You have to figure it out on your own. Okay, we're coming up to the first spot where you can make sort of easy money. Sometimes there is a battle going on right here, and it's between two factions. There are basically three factions that you can find, two of them fighting here. One faction is are the bandits, another faction are the cumans, which are basically uh, barbarian tartars that are in the employ of the King Sigismund, who is the one causing all the issues here. And then there are the guards, and the guards... I say there's three, but the guards can also be with traders. They can be the traders' guards, or they can be guards just from the the city or the town. But anyway, there's sometimes a battle here. But this isn't. This is one place where you can make money fairly easy. But I want to show you the second place. So you're coming up here, and then as soon as you get to about here, you want to cut across. And follow this little path down to this track basically here in the woods turn right and if I'll open it up to show you so this is the inn I was talking about the um, the place where I showed you where you can buy permanent lodgings uh, this is the fast travel spot at the monastery. We rode up this road. Right in here is where a battle sometimes occurs. Wait a minute. What am I all the way over there for? Oh, I know why. So there, right in here is where sometimes a battle sometimes occurs that you can watch. And then this is where I kind of cut across the, uh, the plains or something. And this is the path that I just turned right on. And so I'm riding that path. And you keep your ears open. You can sometimes hear them fighting because they'll be yelling at each other. Cross this bridge. Just found a, a concili conciliation cross, which my little icon's covering. Still covering. There it is. That's where I just saw that con conciliation cross. You keep your ears open. Sometimes there's a battle right here between the different factions. And they're not waiting for you. But the best place is up here. If you keep on coming around next to the river, cross this little bridge, you come to this abandoned hut. This abandoned hut is a pretty good little place. 
because nobody lives here and you can come in here and sleep and save if you want so I'm gonna get back on pebbles and here we go now at this point I usually save because you never know what's gonna happen so I've saved it and if you can see there are some guys up here in armor and they're about to fight some other guys coming out of the woods it looks like bandits against humans as you can see they're fighting and then we just have to wait until they kill each other off it looks like the bandits won now here's here's a little tricky part if you want to you can fight them there's four of them if you're not very high level it's gonna be tough so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into stealth mode cuz see you can hear him saying hey who's there hey who's there what's up there you'll hear somebody at some point go who are you but if you wait they'll eventually walk off see who are you they're they're yelling that at me what's gone going on over there they're yelling at me what's that so I'm gonna back up basically they basically they see you here but you're far enough away that they're they who are you you're far enough away that they don't consider you a threat and they're in pretty good armor Just gotta wait. Looks like they're finally starting to go. Yeah, they're finally leaving. if you're lucky sometimes they kill each other off so here is the free loop basically as you can tell I've already looted more than I can carry and they killed a bunch of humans so I'm gonna put some of this on my horse As you can see, I mean, this is some good stuff. Uh, golden spurs are the most expensive spurs you can find, and we have some that are worth 1.5k. Heavy lamellar armor, 785, two of them. Hungarian hauberk, 480 each, two of them. Lamellar pauldrons in the 300 range, um, male coif. Noble Quaff, 420. I'm probably mispronouncing the hell out of that. Uh, Silver Spurs are 645. So you, as you can see, you can make a pretty good amount of money doing this. Now it looks like they killed some guards. If you notice, the loot has 
you have to hold down the E button. And that's because the game considers you as stealing that. You're stealing from these guards. And if you get caught stealing, you're going to get in trouble. But the thing about it is, it's very hard to get caught unless you're really trying. So I've just looted, what, six guys for free. I didn't have to hurt anybody, didn't have to kill anybody. I'm very low level. I probably couldn't have killed any of them. And you see this little red hand? That that means they they consider that as stolen. And a regular you know, merchant will not buy that. But the longer you hold on to it, uh, the red hand will uh, go away at some point. Uh, basically, people will forget that it was stolen. Um, so we got this Brigadine for 1.5k, and actually that's an upgrade for me, so I could I could actually put that on. Um, probably not going to do it for now. I'm going to wait until it actually, the uh, stolen, stolen flag comes off of it. So that let's show you on the map where we are so where this is this is the little hut that's abandoned and this is Sasau monastery so you just come up here go up get on this track go up next to the river cross this little bridge and there are battles along the way that you can do every one of these spots that I mentioned were are very similar to right here except a lot of times it's not as many guys and you don't get as much loot although I have gotten some pretty good loot right here and if you're careful you don't you can loot without ever having to bother anybody and I'm overloaded let's see if my horse can take a little bit more he can the only problem is I usually come here after I have gotten the horse called Jenda. I think it's the top horse in the game. It's a level five horse and carry can carry can carry about four hundred. And so now I'm gonna I'm going to say something. A spoiler is about to come up. And I want you to know that a spoiler is coming up. It's not gonna spoil the main line or the main quests, but it is a spoiler, and if you don't want to watch it past this because you don't want a spoiler then that's fine I'm this is just for the people that want a little um, a little better chance to keep some of this loot and this is a um, spoiler coming up can't sprint while you're overloaded you can't ride your horse when you're overloaded so I'm gonna go behind the house And as I said, this is a spoiler, so if you are watching it still, I expect that at some point you did not mind getting the, the spoiler. This is a grave. I don't have a shovel on me, but if I dig a hole, there's a container here. And in the container is some loot. But that's not why I'm showing you this. The reason I'm showing you this is because once you've emptied that container, you can use that container to store stuff. So as you can see, I am at 254 and my capacity is 101. Once this container is available, I can put loot in there and it'll stay there forever. I can come back at a later time and get it and take it to the merchants and sell it. So I just wanted to let you know if you, you know, I used to, and I'll show you what I used to do, which wasn't a very good option because this in the container in the in the grave in the container your loot will not will not um, deteriorate it will not disappear it will not poof however you want to say it what I used to do is I used to go inside this little house And drop everything.
but eventually those items will those items will disappear so you can you can drop it in this little house nobody will pick it up but after a certain amount of time it won't be there anymore it'll just have gone out of the game so if you drop it I used to just I would have this thing so full it would be almost like two or three feet deep on each level then I sleep and then it honestly once I got to a point where I had about I was overloaded by about 4,000 I would walk I would I will walk or would walk back to the to the town to uh, put my loot away or sell it so that's um, that's how you can make money without even fighting so as we've already said you know I mean you can see you're gonna make three or four K easily off of one trip and that's how you make e money easily and it's very it's still very early in the game you're in I'm on ginger and a pickle I'm at level five and really I got two of those levels from herbalism while I was still in scallops so I really haven't done anything all I've done is got to the ginger and a pickle quest and I haven't even done that I haven't even gone to the northern charcoal burners yet so that's um that's a little trick and honestly these guys are there's almost always somebody fighting there so you could go in that little hut sleep for an hour come out and you know if you're not overloaded you can jump on your horse and maybe ride up the trail a little bit come back and they'll be fighting again so you can get you know you if, if you have enough food but but i mean really there's food on the on the corpses so you can sit here for days and get and do this you know 10 15 times in a row if you want if you have the patience the only thing is once you're overloaded you have to walk back to the city because your horse won't carry it and you could put it in the grave but eventually you're gonna have to walk it back if uh, you want to keep it all so that's that's my uh, video to explain how to make some money in this game without actually fighting and um, I think it's pretty easy but um, you know it's also fun and easy if you ask me uh, to play the game uh, do the quests and that sort of thing and you'll find that you're actually even fighting guys like that and beating them but anyway that's going to be the end of this video uh, thank you very much for watching if you like it just let me know if um, I do other quote unquote informative videos like this for other games that I noticed some people might need some help on. I did one for Asia Civil War 2 game regarding the formation of uh, armies and corps and, and divisions. So um, let, you, let me know what you think. If it helps you, if it hurts you, if you, you try it and, it and it works like a charm or if you try it and, and you fail. Anyway, thanks a lot.